So other than the like stroke path and the shape and grain, Apple Pencil is kind of where I like to live. Now this is going to, when I talked about taper earlier, so there's the stroke path, which um, has the fall off. And then I said, but I don't use it because there's other options. There's taper, which I don't really use because there's other options which live in Apple Pencil. And um, the pressure and size with the pressure is what determines that. So, you know, if I'm doing, that's real big. Um, if I'm doing, you know, calligraphy, it's too big to really sample, but you can see that pressure is going to make a huge difference here. And that can be with opacity. So there's your fall off, but it's like really controlled because it's based off of pressure. Now, the problem is if you have size up, for pressure and opacity, your size will change with the opacity. So if this didn't have any size pressure variation and it only had the opacity, then that's how that would show up. Um, but I like to have size up quite a bit um, for like calligraphy style brushes or for, you know, studio brushes and stuff that I want a lot of control over. The flow will even give you um, more of that opacity, but like on a taper scale, because see how lighter pressure, it's basically the same, but is even more intense um, for fall off. But I love that I get to control it instead of using the um, fall off in stroke path. So I don't touch it because you have this much more dynamic range here. And then bleed is, um, how much it bleeds around the edges with varying pressure. And then tilt will tweak the way that the pencil responds with tilt. So this graph registers from like zero to 90 degrees. So this is helpful if you're using um, like a pencil style. So if I go to my pencil here and go to Apple Pencil. I have tilt on here um, slightly, but you can see how if it's tilted versus if it's upright, it has a different dynamic. It's gonna respond differently. So that's based off of what type of tilt I have. So I have it to nine degrees, so it's gonna be, basically I have to have this pretty dang flat for this effect to take place, and then it um, will adjust um, or what am I saying? Correct itself as it gets up higher. But this is where like shading comes into effect that you can do without having to switch brushes back and forth all the time. So that's helpful. And then you can adjust the opacity based off of that. Uh, gradation will make a softer appearance, you can see. And then we have bleed, which is going to adjust how much, you know, the edges are bleeding when it's tilted and it will kind of soften any detail and then um, the size is the effect of the tilt. So I could make that smaller like that. But when I'm on the edge, I do want it to have a wider, um, more like an actual pencil where it's on its side. So it's gonna have a wider range. Size compression will prevent the texture within the brush to grow along with the brush size. So kind of like when you're in the grain and you have that um, kind of like the same settings that we talked about in the grain, but Apple Pencil has that option to compress the size so that doesn't happen. But yeah, the this is kind of where a lot of my magic will happen <laughs> is inside of the Apple Pencil because of the pressure sensitivity and like simple adjustments like that. And so I love this this area right here. <laughs>